slide. All right, health technology assessment is not new. For example, it started in 1993 when, when the Philippine National Formulary was set up. It was already there. And then it became a committee. It was, there was also a, an HTA committee in, the, in PhilHealth from 1999 to 2011. And then finally in 2012, HTA was adopted in the setting up of the Philippine National Formulary to select drugs with good value for money. So that's where the idea came in, how to select health technologies with good value for money. Uh, it was also touched on in the National Health Insurance Act in 2013. And uh, an AO in, in 2016 officially uh, included health technology assessment in the selection of drugs. Then, so as you can see, it was an off-on thing. No? There was an idea that was introduced maybe and then it will wane and then it will be introduced again until in 2019, it was officially uh, mentioned in the Universal Health Care Act that HTA shall be the primary mechanism to determine the coverage in field health and in the DOH programs. So health technology assessment refers to the systematic evaluation of the properties, effects, or impact of health technologies to address a health problem and improve the quality of life and health of our people. Also, health technology assessment, therefore, has been there, but it has not been, it has not been really, really organized and integrated in our system until the 2019 Universal Healthcare Act. Next slide, please. So in the Universal Healthcare Act of 2019, or what we call the Republic Act 11, 11223, no? It was clear that to progressively realize universal health care, there must be a systematic approach and clear role delineation among stakeholders and to equitably uh, and to ensure equitable access to quality and affordable health care and protection against financial uh, risk, there is a very, a very clear section on health technology assessment uh, on, in the chapter on governance and accountability. Next slide, please. All right, there are, there are in the beginning or from the beginning, we had two process, HTA process trucks or health technology assessment process trucks, no? We have the major applications and the minor applications. Under major applications, we have the general HTA process and the expedited HTA process. Whereas in the minor applications, we have the, the minor evaluation. Now, the expedited process and the minor inclusion process were very processes were very active in the last two and a half years because of COVID. So parang madali ano. This year and in the following year, we are now applying the general HTA process. So this is the first time we are really uh, going through the general HTA process, no? And we started it through the nominations in May, last May. Last May. So this is the general HTA process. Hmm? All right, we opened it in April 4 some, and closed it in May 2022. 
the topic nominations, ito yung topic nominations, and then uh, the topic will undergo prioritization. After that, there will be a scoping and protocol development for those that were prioritized. Kakaroon ng scoping and protocol protocol development for assessment. Ito na yung beginning ng assessment. Topic assessment. Then evidence appraisal. will come up with an initial recommendation. Appeals period. Resolution of the appeals. And then finally, uh, submitted to the Secretary of Health for decision. And then if it is approved, dissemination. We are here in the topic prioritization. This is what we are doing, and this is what we are consulting this afternoon. In other words, once we finalize the topics that are prioritized, it will undergo the rest of the HTA uh, steps until dissemination. So, mahaba pa pong proseso. Nag-uumpisa pa lang tayo sa topic prioritization. We do not know what will happen after actual evidence appraisal and initial recommendation and decision of the Secretary of Health, and finally, dissemination. Okay. Next slide, please. So after, ano, after prioritization, how long will it take before we reach the dissemination stage? So if we put in, yung prioritization is here, and we mark this as week zero, once we are finished, with the prioritization, that will be week zero. That means that we'll start the scoping and protocol development and go up this way. It will take about four months, four to five months for us to reach the recommendation from scoping to topic assessment, evidence appraisal and recommendation will be about four to five months. And then another one to two months for decision of the SO, of the Secretary of Health and then dissemination finally. So all in all, mga six months, we should be done in six months if we do the full, the full length of, of the general health technology assessment process. Okay. So it's really less than eight months, pero okay, let's make it eight months. <laughs> Next slide, please. Ah, yung eight months, including prioritization. Okay, now, uh, let me give you a summary of, uh, of how many nominations did we receive last May. No? We received a total of 140 nominations. No? Out of those 140, there were two applications that were withdrawn. 50 applications were not processed because of non-compliance with requirements and other related concerns. Two applications were existing health technology topics. And finally, there were 86 a new technology, new health technology topics that underwent uh, the, the, the prioritization process. So that's about 60% of nominations, or right, 62, mga 62 or 63% of the nominations underwent the, the prioritization process, and about less than 40% uh, did not undergo the full process. Next slide, please. And here is a tally of the, the, the 31 new health technologies that we have preliminarily prioritized. Preliminary, kasi ito yung, this will change because of this, uh, of this uh, consultation period and the appeals period. No? For example, out of the 57 nominated drug technologies, drugs, 21 were prioritized. Out of seven vaccines, five were prioritized. Out of uh, four surgical, medical and surgical procedures, two were prioritized. Devices, all of the three devices 
were prioritized for preventive and public health promotion. Uh, none, none were prioritized, none from other health technologies, and none from traditional medicine. Huh? Ito yung ano, therefore, okay. So what are the criteria for prioritization? How did we, how did we prioritize? What criteria did we use, no? Next slide, please. All right. So we differentiate between existing health technologies that were nominated by DOH and PhilHealth, no? And new technologies uh, nominated by pharmaceutical companies and so forth and so on. So we look at the number of total users. We look at the severity of the disease where it's going to be applied or used. We look at equity or ethical or social implications. The, those, with, those would be the criteria that will be common uh, between the existing and the new technologies. However, they now, we now use different criteria after this we will use budget impact to government if it is existing and cost effectiveness if it is existing. If it is a new technology, we will look at whether it is a part of the national health service needs. No, Is, it, is there a law about it? Is it now a part of the public health programs? And we look at estimated household financial impact instead of budget impact to the government, for new technologies, we look at household financial impact. In the next slide, next slide, we will, be, we will share with you what evidences, what sources of evidence do we use for each criterion. For the first three criterion, which, which are common for both existing and new technologies, for example, as far as the total number of users of the health technology, we look at the OH reports, we look at field health claims databases, and we look at international databases. All right. For severity of disease, we use two, two, cri two criteria, disability weights for, for vaccines, for example, and we use, at, we use the WHO global burden of disease average disability weights. No? And for comparative morbidity or mortality, we use the DOH reports, field health databases, program implementation reviews, and also expert advice. Hmm? Okay. Now for equity or ethical or social implications, ito ang dami na nakakatuwa kasi ang daming papers na hinanap like because we wanted the paper to be local, local paper, or if not, at least in a neighboring country comparable to the Philippines. So we look at local academic and research papers, national agency and other civil service organizations, patient registries and information systems, and again, expert advice. Okay. The next slide, we differentiate again existing sources of, inform of evidence from existing and health technology. For example, when we look at budget impact and cost effectiveness for the existing health technologies, we look at actual valuation from field health, budget utilization reports of the DOH programs and pertinent government agencies and institutions. Existing kasi siya eh. So there will be such reports. And for, for cost effectiveness, we also look at the OH reports and international databases. For the health technology, for the new health technologies, for estimated household impact, we do local cost analysis studies and clinical experts on estimates of cost. Also, Field health medical cost, no? And the National Health Service needs, we look at laws, field health plans, the OH plans, the OH programs, and the PTAC, uh, PTAC priorities. Okay, next slide, please. 
oh, I think I'm done. <laughs> so I hope that was clear on regarding our criteria and the process for prioritization. I think I turn over the presentation to uh, Sonia. So, yes. Okay, Son, yes, go. Uh, thank you, Paul, to Dr. Marita Reyes, our uh, chair of the HTA Council and a member of the core committee. So now we will be presenting the preliminary list for the general track of HTA 2022. Uh, next slide, please. So reminders to our attendees that this is only a preliminary list. So the preliminary list of priority topics for the HTA 2022 consists of 33 health technology topics that will undergo 25 assessment. This list is still subject to change depending on the results of the appeals. The topics in the final priority list will undergo HTA based on the decision criteria in the UHC law that will determine the listing of the health technology in the PNF or and or its inclusion in the benefit packages of the PhilHealth or possible UH funding. Next slide, please. So let's start with atezolizumab and lenvatinib for unresectable hepatocellular carcinoma uh, submitted by Roche Philippines and High SI Pharmaceuticals. Then atezolizumab and pembrolizumab Again, uh, atalizumab submitted by Roche Philippines and pembrolizumab submitted by the Philippine Society of Medical Oncology and Merck Sharp and Dom. Next slide, please. By Physic Insulin Aspart 30 for type 2 diabetes for adults submitted by Novo Nordisk Philippines, Brexpiprazole, Paroxetine, and Vortrazetine for major depressive disorder submitted by DOH, uh, DPCB or Disease Prevention and Control Bureau and PhilHealth, Zeftaroline Fosamil for community acquired pneumonia submitted by Pfizer Philippines. Next slide, please. Zeftazidem Abibactam and Zeftolizane Tazabactam for hospital acquired Pneumonia, including ventilator-associated pneumonia, submitted by Pfizer Philippines and San Lazaro Hospital, respectively. Silostazole for the treatment of ischemic symptoms, prevention of recurrence of cerebral infarction, excluding car cardiogenic cerebral embolism, submitted by the Stroke Society of the Philippines. Colonoscopy for the diagnosis of colorectal cancer as confirmatory test or procedure if found positive on FOBT or fecal occult blood test submitted by DOH DPCB. Next slide, please. Erdostein for the treatment of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease submitted by OEP Philippines. Then, High-risk human papilloma virus testing for the early detection of cervical cancer submitted by UH DPCB. Insulin Deglodec for type 2 diabetes for adults submitted by Novo Nordisk Philippines. Japanese encephalitis vaccine for the active immunization against the Japanese encephalitis virus and its complications such as encephalitis and clinical meningitis among children aged one year and above, submitted by BOHDPCB. Next slide, please. Labetalol hydrochloride for the management of hypertensive disorders in pregnancy, submitted by Manila East Medical Center. Liraglutide for type 2 diabetes in adults submitted by Novo Nordisk Philippines. Mammography for the screening of breast cancer submitted by DOH DPCB. Newborn pulse oximetry for the indirectly detecting hypoxemia in medically ill patients that may raise suspicion for critical congenital heart disease submitted by DOH DPCB. Palbosiclib and ribosiclib for the 
or hormone receptor positive, uh, HER2 negative advanced or metastatic cancer submitted by Pfizer Philippines and Philippine Society of Medical Oncology, respectively. Next slide, please. And then paroxetine for post-traumatic stress disorder submitted by DOH TPCV. Pneumococcal conjugate vaccine 13 for uh, all adults, including senior citizens and patients with comorbidities or risk factors such as invasive pneumococcal disease and pneumonia submitted by Pfizer Philippines. Rather place for acute myocardial inf infarction submitted by PhilHealth. Rotavirus vaccine for the prevention of rotavirus, the most common cause of severe gastroenteritis among children less than one year of age, submitted by DOH, DPCB. Next slide, please. Chastuzumab emantasine for the treatment of HER2 positive uh, breast cancer with residual invasive disease after neoadjuvant treatment submitted by Roche Philippines and ultrasound with alpha, alpha fetoprotein for the screening of patients at risk to develop hepatocellular carcinoma who have not progressed. To cirrhosis submit, submitted by DOH DPC. And that's all for our new health technologies. For our existing technologies, we have renal replacement therapy for chronic kidney disease submitted by PhilHealth and the ship from two dose to one dose human papilloma virus vaccine for the prevention of cervical cancer submitted by the DOH DPC. So that's all. That's our 25 assessment consisting of 33 topics. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we are now opening the floor for our public consultation. So next slide, please. So you may indicate your questions. You may indicate your question in the Q&A function on the Zoom if you have any, and the HDAC will address HDAC and HDAC will address your questions accordingly. When asking a question, please indicate your name and organization you are representing, and then the actual question. Uh, please follow the prescribed format. So thank you. So we are now opening the floor for anyone who would like to ask questions. So uh, kindly acknowledging uh, Leonie Gavia first. So I don't know. Yes, uh, Leonie Gavia. Um, Nakaris hand po kaya, Miss Leoni. Um, would you like to ask your question po? Hello, son. Yes, yes. Mom, you already chatted, yes. Uh, Ma'am Yoni, if your audio, if you're having trouble with your audio, you may type in your question. Question na na po. Okay po. If na po, let's ask uh, Jubaida Aquino to ask their question. So. For now, let us address uh, those in the chat box. We can already answer the queries. Okay. 
Erica Garcia of Abbott Laboratories, may we know the reasons for non-inclusion in the prioritized list of the following health technologies? So they specify the technologies that were nominated. For submission of appeals, is the proponent the only one allowed to submit appeals? Okay, for the first question, I think for the reasons for non-prioritization, we can uh, email them or submit to them the considerations of the HTA Council when they did the prioritization exercise and then cite the reasons for non-prioritization. So you may, you will receive an email from us. And then um, for the second question, it is not only the proponent who can submit appeals, but all other stakeholders who have, uh, you know, interest in the particular health technology. Okay. So next question. So for, from Mr. Kristen Agaceta of Takeda Healthcare Philippines, so there are four questions. Will the proponents receive specific feedback on their topic nominations? I think we already answered that yes, we will feedback on your particular topic nomination and why they were not prioritized and what scores were given. Number two, what will happen to the topics which will not be prioritized this round? So again, there will be another call for topic nomination next year and you may submit uh, these topics for consideration in the next round of topic prioritization. Number three, will there be an alternative HDA topic prioritization for technologies that are meant for rare diseases? If yes, when will that be estimated to be opened? Uh, there is a particular law on orphan disorders and we are now in talks with the Disease Prevention and Control Bureau to understand the specific needs of the program. Uh, I think we cannot answer this, but we will respond to the a roadmap that will be prepared by the DPCB on how we will address the orphan disorders. Number four, will the succeeding general topic nomination submissions be ongoing year round or yearly basis or will DOH post the next schedule for the next submission? For now, I think we can have the topic nominations on a yearly basis. And uh, the next round of topic nomination will be uh, around the same period next year. Okay. I hope that we answered all your queries. Next question. From Mr. Harvey Uy. What and how long is the appeals process? Um, okay. For this uh, appeals process, so we are just consulting you on... Uh, the proposed topics that will be prioritized for the assessment and for consideration of each HTAC, uh, you are given, all the stakeholders are given a chance. I think we opened the appeals process for two weeks in order to justify why you think uh, your particular health technology should be prioritized or considered by the Health Technology Assessment Council. So after this, we will open the appeals process until... Okay, until, so when will they submit the, when is the deadline for the submission of appeals? So, uh, September 26. So, okay, September 26 ang deadline ng appeals process if you wish to, for HTAC to reconsider your topic or you think there are other um, sources of evidence which we have not considered when uh, we did the scoring, then you can submit your appeals. It started for last. September. So we already opened the appeals process September 12th, and then uh, this the deadline for appeals is September 26. Okay. What else? Are there other ones? Here. Somebody says here, I hope you can send the reason why an application was not considered before the deadline of appeals para maka-appeal sila ng tama. Give the appropriate appeal siguro. They need to know why they were not considered. Okay. Uh, oh, oh. Ma'am Marita, remember that uh, we rank the topics according to the scores. That's right. And then uh, based on the scores, based on the data that is available, that's how we, uh, how we did the scoring. And if you look at the topics that were prioritized, many were in response to the needs of the program. So again, we have to be aligned with the 
plans of the Department of Health and PhilHealth on future financing, they have to be responsive to national health service needs. So those are some of the considerations. And this is a venue for us also to validate, for example, with the healthcare providers and the patients, whether the topics that we're, we are now considering for prioritization are indeed the technologies that our healthcare providers and patients need. So there is still a room, a room for uh, consideration if you think, if patients think, if healthcare providers think that uh, some health technologies should really be prioritized for this round of uh, assessment. And maybe we should also introduce the idea of limitation in, yeah. uh, in human resource, no? In human Wait, resource, uh, yes. Uh -oh. Yeah, because in the beginning, we even said that we will only choose up to 20 but actually we expanded it to 33 technologies. Uh, and the only reason for that was because the assessments can, all, can be done, one assessment for a, for a couple of technologies, diba. Right? But the limitation, the cut off really was because of limitation of human resource. So I don't know, maybe if for example, I'm thinking, did somebody make makes an appeal and the appeal is valid? That means that's an additional that's an additional technology that will be assessed and an additional load to our human resource. No, but we'll try and we'll try and work it out. Yes. So it's not just the limitation in uh, human resources, but also what can really be financed by the yes, DOH yes. and PILNA, okay? So again, we have to be responsible to, uh, responsive to the national health sector needs. Okay. And then another question from Mr. Joel Lau Abbott was feedback provided to the proponents. We asked since the person from Abbott who did the submission has left the company and we may not have received the feedback for our submissions and okay. Again, we will email the proponents uh, with regard to the considerations of the HTAC when we prioritize your topic nomination. Okay, so another question coming from PGH. Ms. Sibyl. Okay, ah, you answered already. From Chris Munoz of Papo, is there an effect? Okay, so some of the some of your questions are being answered in the chat box. But probably, can we share also the um, the, uh, the file where we already responded to the specific queries of the proponents? We will, we will post this part. Okay. I don't see any hand being raised. Would anyone want to verbalize their concern, questions? So from MSD, do we already have the timeline for the missions in 2023? Okay, in 2023. We don't have that timeline yet uh, because right now uh, we are still talking with the DOST on how we can tap the other academic centers. So we cannot just assess internally at HTAB because of the limitations. So depending on that, uh, agreement with the DOST on mobilizing the research network, I think we can see uh, the future topic nominations to be opened. Probably Mamarita, third quarter of next year, correct? Open by the next third quarter of May. Yeah, yeah. maybe even second quarter. Second sometime quarter. in May again. Maybe sometime in May again or June. That will be like this year. Okay. Uh -oh. From Mr. Paul Mendoza, Sarisis, Philippines, we've noticed that submissions from patient organizations uh, were all not included, but we all know the need for these medications. Can you at least give it a chance to be included in the PNL so that these medications can be accessed by patients who are really in need? Okay, Ms. Uh, Sir Paul, you can submit your appeal. So, uh, yes, we did receive a lot of uh, topic nominations on psoriasis interventions. 
we will consider po, uh, Sir Paul. And then uh, another question, is a CPG required for a health technology to be considered for topic nomination? No. So there are a lot of conditions in the Philippines where we don't yet have local CPG, so we can accept those topic nominations. From uh, Ms. Daisy Sembrano, is the DOH ready for an alternative list that may require a different set of criteria, conditions, and analysis? We are not ready for that yet. Right now, we are following what is in the process guide. Uh, the criteria that uh, we have set out when we did the prioritization and we are responding to the priority healthcare needs of DOH and PhilHealth aligned with the health financing plans, okay? Number, okay, so there's an anonymous, uh, from, uh, there's a question from an anonymous attendee. If HA will review one molecule under a health technology, can other manufacturers still submit data for consideration to be included in the assessment? Uh, may I be clarified here on this particular question? So are you speaking about uh, a class review? So we can do a class review for similar health technologies. We do that. And then from Pfizer, for health technologies, which may not necessarily pass the criteria or score, every submission, uh, will there be a chance for such health technologies to be reviewed, prioritized? Okay, so again, we are explaining that we receive around 140 topics this year. So that... Those topics uh, range from drugs, procedures, devices, and we had to rank uh, the, the particular topic nominations according to the criteria that was set. So if you are in the top 30 or top 20 or top 30, then most likely your health technologies will be prioritized. If we have failed to, for example, incorporate some data or information when we did the scoring, then you can appeal. Maybe we have missed uh, some valid sources of information. Like, for example, our difficulty is sometimes there's no burden of disease study for a particular intervention, and therefore you can uh, submit uh, for appeal. And we can review our prioritization. From Lundbeck, Philippines, how many health technologies can still be accommodated after the appeals. As Ma Marita has said, so if the HTAC finds merit in the appeal that really that particular health technology can potentially add value to our patients and health providers, then we can accommodate. Ma Marita, diba? that's what you yeah. said. <laughs> we'll try our best to accommodate. Try our best. We add, add to the 33, therefore. Yes. Okay. No? <laughs> Are there other questions? Maybe, uh, nakita ko yung sagot ni Shina eh. Sabi niya, we will, we are very considerate of of your appeals, ganon. But also maybe we should, we should uh, relate to them, to the public, to our audience that, you know, during the, during the assess, during the, preliminary evaluation of the 140 technologies that were nominated. Uh, there were several, a lot, more than 40% not, were not able to comply with certain, with certain requirements. And the HTAD had to, had to notify them about what is lacking back and forth. So there were communications back and forth, trying to help the nominators to complete the submissions so that they will not be eliminated easily. So there was really a lot of effort to help the nominators complete the submissions. Kung, kung gusto lang sana ng, ng HDAD, to reduce the number of nominations, kaagad, eliminated na kaagad, basta hindi na kompleto, no? But they made an effort to help 
denominators complete the submissions. No? But still, meron pa din na hindi nakakompleto. And maybe in the next round, they will know what these are already. Okay? All right. Should we go on to the other questions? And dami pang questions. Yes, yes, sige, go. Okay. Uh, from Novartis, uh, how was the information from Section 7 of the topic nomination form considered? Ano yung Section 7? What is Section 7? Can the HAC release the results of a score sheet uh, which was used to rank the health technologies? Mamarita, can we release that? So that's a question to HTAC. But we do have uh, that score sheet. In the beginning, we thought we would uh, show the ranking based on scores, di ba? Mm -hmm. But we thought that it might be embarrassing for some if we if we uh, show the ranking. But I think for for individuals, for individual nominators, we can do so. Okay. And then the second question, the HTAC received new nominations for the general HTA track in May. Did the HTAC employ the same prioritization criteria scoring system? No. So before the pandemic, remember, there are pending FEC uh, topics that we are still um, assessing right now because these were topics that were identified prior to the pandemic. And we are updating everyone on the progress or the status of review of those Health technologies, but I think generally the criteria are similar. So, because when we did the uh, process guide, we look at the previous prioritization criteria of the formulary executive council. I think in uh, generally the criteria was similar. And then uh, another question coming from no, wala. Yung katuloy po ng question niya, Director Guerrero, will the HTAC consider externally commissioned clinical and economic evidence such yes. as those generated by academe private firms with support from the industry? Yes, we do. So we can appraise those. Actually, mas mabilis yun, di ba? So we do consider externally uh, done cost-effectiveness analysis and we can just do model busting. And that will be faster in, uh, in fact. Okay. Yeah, but they will be appraised, of course. They will, they will be appraised, appraised, of course. They will uh -oh. be appraised because they have to follow the reference case. And of course, the models will have to be validated with the other stakeholders. Okay. Okay, so another question. Ah, did you read this from Landbeck Philippines? It's from uh, Dr. Taguba. He says, after we request for the score, kunyari, they have the score already, may we be allowed to know the score needed for it to be prioritized? May cut-off point tayo, di ba? There's no cut-off point, ma'am, but I think we rank and then based on the top 30 high scores, that's how we selected the priority topics. Oo nga, pero ngayon na may appeal, we, can we stick to the top 30? Hindi na, magiging top something na yan yes. if it's acceptable. Yeah, so it will be relative, the, the score will be relative to the previous scores. In other words, if I can, what I can see would be if the, the score of the, last, of the number 33, let's say, if the score of the number 33 is 70 and in the appeals in the appeal the score the score based on the appeal is 71 then it's higher than the 70 the last one and therefore may be included in other words the appeal will be, be based on the score received by the lowest the score received by the number 33. If the score that will be received is higher than number 33, then it will be included. Again, Marita, we will accommodate as many topics as feasible. So oh. depending on the re 
the submission of the appeal, if really there is merit in considering, they are responding to a particular uh, health need of the patients, they are responding to a particular priority of the Department of Health and PhilHealth, then we can reconsider ma. Kaya nga, that means that the score will be higher. Yes. Oh, oh, and then so if the score is higher than the lowest, and then the lowest in the previous prioritization list, then you have the right to be included. Something like that. Okay, so there's a question from Papo. How do you consider budget expenditure of a health technology if there is still no health program in place? I don't think that's part of our, the criteria no, no, for prioritization. Just, uh oh, that was only for the new technologies. Yeah. Okay. Next. Off-label. So there's a question on off-label. We do not consider off-label uses because we have to be compliant with the approved indications of our Food and Drug Administration. Lana, no more questions. Questions were already directly answered in the ah, ito, ito chat box. Si ano, Takeda, Healthcare Philippines. Are the numbering in the issuance indicative of the prioritization ranking? No. The ranking that, that the numbers that you saw in the matrix, those are not ranking. Those are not ranking scores. That's, that was just for counting purposes. Diba? Am I not right? Those are uh, not ranking, no? Yes, for Doc Marita. Uh -oh. The list we and uh, we uh released to the public is alphabetized, not okay. organized based on ranking. Okay. Dito, say, meron pa po tayo bang questions? Uh, some, somebody asked if we can, uh, if they can submit an exemption letter to the National Formulary Committee if missed, if they missed the submission period. So in accordance with the universal healthcare law, there is no more exemption route. So everything has to go through the HTA process. Uh, but we are very sensitive about, uh, for example, interventions that are priorities of the Department of Health because there we have a particular mandate to deliver a particular health service or a condition. Uh, but right now, there is really no exemption route anymore. Thank you, Director Mime. Uh Another question for the HTAD. Is there an opportunity to extend the deadline for appeal submission? Uh, Machina. So as of now, April, April um, September 26 is the deadline for the appeals. So Machina. Yeah, we reiterate for that late and incomplete submissions will no longer be accepted because we also have a timeline to follow po in order to complete the HTA process. Thank you. But rest assured that we will be facilitative if you have questions even even before the end of the appeals period. Okay. Another question from an anonymous attendee asking if there is a quota of the number of approved HTA nominations every year that limits the approval per year. So, I think in general, from the FEC, mga 20 to 30 topics yung napa prioritize namin every year. Okay, so again, the limitation is one, uh, the number of uh, assessors and two also what can be feasibly financed by the Department of Health and Philhealth. So kaya nga dapat mas responsive yung health technology nyo dun sa um, health service priority of DOH and Philhealth. Then the higher possibility that your technology will be prioritized. Okay. Okay. Um, from the from Novartis Philippines, the inclusion in the PNF also allows DOH-owned or LDU-owned hospitals to 
procure medicine at the local level depending on their requirement and to serve current and met and met needs is this also something considered during uh the evaluation or more weight was given to the doh national field health programs at this point yes so there's so, an extra okay so if you look at the criteria the general criteria there is a particular criteria on national health service needs so there is more weight given to technologies that are uh, for example, there's a national policy, there's a national law, there's a UN commitment, then we give more weight to that. But uh, we do consider health technologies uh, for hospitals, for other diseases, which may not have um, existing mandates or laws, because there are other criteria to be considered, like, for example, burden of disease. Uh, it can also reduce the out-of-pocket impact, uh, the out-of-pocket impact to patients. So, uh, this is balanced by the other criteria, okay? So, um, another question, po, I think this was addressed by Dr. Marita, but for clarification purposes, um, they are asking if a technology is prioritized upon appeals, does that mean that na mababawa may matatanggal na technology sa list Wala. natin. Wala. Madadagdagan po. If for now, 33, and may appeals na pumasok sa atin, and uh, may na-priorities na topic, magiging 34, madadagdagan lang po yung list. Wala pong mawawala sa current 33 topics po namin. Not in words, walang madidisplays. Yes po. Um... Another question from an anonymous attendee, uh, building on the question of PAPO. According to the process guide, National Health Service Need is one of the new criteria for uh, new health technologies. Does this mean there is a higher score for those policies or uh, for those with policies or government programs? So as stated earlier by Dr. Meme, uh, the HTAD and HTAC has to be aligned with uh, existing government programs, especially with the DPCB and the field health. Maybe, you know, I, because we keep, we keep receiving questions regarding the criteria and the weights that we give, can we flush, can we project again our criteria so that they will better understand? Siguro, because uh, I keep getting questions about ito, oh, here are the criteria. So as you can see, as you can see, ito yung criteria for prioritization. Merong common criteria with existing health technologies that were nominated by DPCB and DON Field Health, DOH and Field Health. Like this one, total number of users, severity of disease, and equity and ethical or social implications. However, yung budget impact to government, sa existing health technologies lang yung gagamitin. At saka yung cost effectiveness, sa existing health technologies lang yung gagamitin. And therefore, ito yung, yeah, this will be the response to the nominations that came from now existing technologies that came from PhilHealth and DOH. Whereas for new health technologies that came from many different nominators, including patient organizations, hospitals, uh, pharmaceutical companies, specialty societies, Ang dagdag dun sa total number of users, severity of disease, and ethical and social implications would be itong national health service needs. So you can see that if it is, if the technology is in is a is a is a need in the national health service, mataas yung point, makakaroon siya ng mataas na points dito. And the estimated, oops, uh, at saka yung ano, at saka itong estimated household financial impact, mataas din siya. So, it, 
So for new technologies, ito yung ginamit. One, two, three, four, five. For existing health technologies, it will be one, two, three, four, five. See? So kung hindi siya kasali sa National Health Service need, medyo mababa ang kanyang score as if it is a new health technology. Okay? All right. And 20% lahat yan equal. 20%, 20%, 20%. Pero within each one, within each one, merong range of scores. And we convert that to 20%. Merong weight, weighting, weighing. So that it will become 20%. And we arrive at the ranking score. It was really a very tedious process because we wanted to be as as comprehensive and as as uh, detailed as possible. Every point is debated and argued about. Um, there is someone raising their hand, Mr. Ernesto Pareja. Um, um, yeah, you may speak. Uh, Mr. Ernesto. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, before we continue with the Q and A, we kindly ask uh, our attendees to please indicate uh, their name and organization in the chat box so we could uh, address them directly. Thank you. Uh, someone asked an anonymous attendee, uh, if the score sheet cannot be released, can we at least get the statistics for the score? What is the distribution range, standard deviation, and median percentile rank of the last technology that made the cut? So, um, ang tanong niya, Dr. Rita, is yun po. No, we did not do an statistical analysis. What we did was just a ranking, something like uh, we ranked them from 1 to, to ano, ilan yung total natin, 80 or 90, and then and then we look at the score. We look at when we reach the number 20, we look at whether number 21, something like um, what would be the acceptable variation from number 20, let's say. Parang yung when we do grading sa, so, sa klase, no? and we look at where did the where, what was the wide, if there's a wide, a wide uh, difference between number 25 and number 26, wide na yung difference, then we cut it off at number 25. But obviously, we had to go down to number 33 because the scores were very close. And then on the number 33 and 34, then it was a split. There was a big gap, and that's where we stopped. Something like that. So we did not use we did not use a statistical analysis for for the scores. We just use parang parang normal we normalized we normalized the, the ranking. And we are always looking at ano yung kaya ng ano yung kaya ng H star and H star. So we were looking at 20, then we went down to 25, and then we further went down to 33 because the scores were very close to each other. And we knew that uh, it would be very difficult to justify why, why, why 70.2 is very different from, from 70.6, something like that. But when the scores were wide, then we stop it at that point. 
Thank you, Paul Morita. So, uh, we would also like to note that proponents can ask a uh, further specific score for the yes. topic they have nominated. Uh -oh. uh, kindly email us if you would want to see your score via our email, hda at doh.gov.ph for more information on your nominated topic, should you wish to see. Thank you. Okay. And for those who al already sent their email addresses here, please be assured that we are noting them and we will email you. Paul. And we will email them before the end of the appeal period. Yes? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. This is possible. Yes, we will provide the copy of the slides in our HTA website as well as the polished version of the question and answer. Okay. So, I don't think um, there are... Oh, Any? someone is asking, uh, Miss Erica, there are two forms under the appeal form. What, which form should be used? If you are referring to uh, the topic nomination, I uh, use... Kind of use the for prioritization form right now. Use the for prioritization form. Uh, Also noting po yung mga nagsasend ng email nila. Thank you. Okay, wala na questions. I don't, uh, wala na pong bagong questions, I think. Um, should we, uh, if there are any more questions, kindly ask them now before uh, we close the floor for our Q&A. You know, if, if none, if none po. For uh, our attendees, if you haven't, uh, please uh, fill up our attendance sheet Google form. Uh, we will be posting it again right, in a few minutes so that we may uh, provide you with your certificate of attendance for our virtual public consultation for HTA 2022. I don't think there are any more questions, Dr. Marita and Director Guerrero. My question for Pupulaisa, Director Gare and uh, Dr. Marita. Someone asked, how can health technologies for small population group be prioritized since 20% of the scoring criteria is about the total number of health users? So... Severity of disease, if the disease is really severe. Okay. At madadagdagan sila sa household budget, if there is it's a very expensive, expensive uh, uh, disease uh, in, in management of that disease. So, meron silang points dun sa ibang, if, if there are, if they are deserving of those points. But obviously, it's not just the burden of disease. 
that will matter. The other other four criteria. Out of the five, there will be four other criteria where they where they will gain points. Okay. Uh -oh. Uh, another question from uh, Ag Ag Agacita. Uh, for appeals process, can we consider issue one says from DOH, other groups as new evidence? Uh, for example, if a program released recently a list of priority disease covered as part of a certain law or IRR, yes, if you are referring to a program that would go to one of our criteria, criteria, National Health Service needs. So if you can submit that, kindly do so. Thank you. But you must understand that we were very meticulous in looking at mga IRRs, laws, and program AOs looking for support for such a thing, in fact. But okay, if it's still possible we're human we could have missed it but yes you can submit something like that uh one more question uh will HTAD release uh, recommended quality of life tools or is it up to the proponents to develop their own? Will we be expecting an ICER threshold anytime soon? Uh, Director Guerrero. <laughs> In the, that we, is something that we want. There are quality of life measures for the different diseases. What we have now is the EQ5D5L for the general population, but of course, what we want is a disease-specific uh, utility value that could be used for future economic evaluations. With regard to the threshold, there are ongoing studies on setting the threshold in the Philippines. I think this will be discussed in future HTAC meetings. For now, uh, we have uh, an implicit threshold, but not really strict. Yung one GDP before. It's a guide, but not really strict. Kasi hindi lang naman cost effectiveness yung criteria, di ba? So, cost effectiveness is just one criteria. Thank you, Director Guerrero. So, I think uh, meron pa mong questions. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we're kindly asking our participants to uh, fill out our feedback form as posted in our group chat. And also don't forget uh, to sign your attendance for sa amin Google, uh, Google form provided earlier. So we will be posting it again in a few minutes. Oh, Meron, may pahabol pa sa question. Um, from uh, Miss ano, Winifer from Pfizer, she asked for the next step. Will there be open dialogue between HTAC and HTAD and the proponent during the evidence appraisal? Meaning assessment during the uh, actual yung, assessment. Yung, the or evidence up appraisal daw po. During the evidence appraisal po yung specific step na mentioning Ms. Winifer. That's, uh, di ba, assessment na yan? Actual yes. assessment. Yes. Apo. After assessment, then evidence appraisal. I think that there will be a, there will be an, a consultation with regard to uh, uh, ano ito, yung protocol development, di ba? Yes, Yes, po, there will be you know, there will be consultation with regard to protocol development, and yes, there will probably be a consultation. I believe uh, after this prioritization, then we will proceed with the scoping and evidence generation. There will be, I'm sure, there will be consultation regarding evidence appraisal. Uh, thank you, po, Dr. Marita. Mm -hmm.
Or wait down. Ito siguro po, last question na po to, before we close the Q&A. So, asked by Ms. Lilibet Escueta, will it be a scheduled consultation or monthly? If you are referring po sa question po kanina ni Ms. Winifred Chuan, ano uh, na um, open dialogue with proponents sa evidence appraisal? Okay. We did that. Just a general guideline. How do we engage the industry uh, during the HDA process, of course, you are the one proposing. So that's one, because you are the source of the evidence for most of the randomized control trials. Second, during the scoping, before we do the protocol development, you will also be consulted with other stakeholders. Scoping, because you may have the evidence, whether published or un unpublished. And then remember then when, that when we do the assessment, we may also collect data from the companies. Because sometimes the data is unpublished. And then uh, for during the appraisal, uh, I think we may call on companies to shed light on particular uh, issues. issues with regard to the use of the, the technology. So nothing constrains the HTAC from uh, calling during the meetings relevant stakeholders that can help them in the assessment. Good. And during the public consultation, you are also part of the public consultation. Okay, so there are many uh, steps in the process where you can be involved. So there's another question. May pahabul po ulit. Um, for example, po uh, nagpa product evaluation ang company. It would help po as additional justification to product use or on assessment. So. Um, um, Mr. Or, uh, Ms. or Mr. Tesvales is asking if product evaluation can be used as additional evidence though so assessments for topic prioritization. For topic prioritization, hindi na. Um, wala dun sa criteria na unless ang kinamit to sa product evaluation uh, if we can see, for example, that what the criteria used in product evaluation could include our own criteria, then maybe that means it was a missed, it was a missed evidence uh, to support the criteria that we use for prioritization. Pero if it's another another set of criteria on product evaluation, then hindi siya kasali. Depends. In other words, it depends on what criteria were used in the product evaluation. Okay, thank you, Paul, Dr. Marita. So we will wait up until 3:30. Kung meron pang ahabol na questions, it's 3:25. So we can do it. <laughs> If may gusto pa pong humabol, uh, you may do so right now po. Before we go to the last part po of our uh, virtual public consultation uh, where we will explain po on how to submit your appeals to us. So... To group well, if none, by uh, 328 or 327, we will be closing the floor na po. So, as of now, it's 326. So, last call po sa ating mga attendees. Should they want to ask any more questions for the HTAD and the HTAC? Thank you. Uh,
We can proceed with the final reminders, Nasan. Okay, sige. We'll be proceeding to the final reminders. Uh, okay. Uh, so for the appeals, so we will uh, reiterate that the appeal period uh, will be until 26th of September. Only appeals that follow the prescribed format and submitted the appeals within the period will be processed. So you can find the prescribed format in our website at uh, htaphilippines.com. And the uh, new evidence to be included in the appeals uh, form should be relevant to the criteria used in the scoring system. So to post performance, you must be familiar with this, uh, the self-scoring participation criteria that was used during the nomination. So. We have the five criteria as discussed earlier by Dr. Marita. And finally, the decision regarding the appeals will be released by the third week of October. So we, uh, we aim to release our final priority list on the third week of October. So again, um, reminding Lampo, if you haven't, kindly fill out our Google form for our uh, attendance. And also our evalu each that evaluation form. Thank you so much. So, in nang po from each that uh, and maybe we may call on uh Dr. Marie Darius to provide her closing remarks for our virtual public consultation. Dr. Marita, you have the floor. Yes. Wow. Thank you very much for staying on with us and participating in this historical, I would call a historical moment, our first time to conduct a public consultation on prioritization because it's our first time to undergo the general HDA process. This was delayed, should have been done in 2020. But because of COVID, we had to postpone it until 2022. So, uh, yeah, we much work to do, no? But uh, it has been a learning process, and we hope that you, as our audience, our clients, our beneficiaries, our future nominators, our future assessors, our future partners in HTA, in doing HTA, because I can see a lot of universities participating. I hope that you also became aware of, of how, of the rigorous process that, that we went through in prioritization. I hope that you understood the criteria that were used. And maybe in the future, we can discuss it some more on how to, on how to broaden it or make it deeper uh, because and we have to want, we want our criteria to be new ones and really meaningful to, to you as our beneficiaries and our clients, no? But let me say that all throughout, it was us in HTAC and HTAD that, that had a lot of learning. For one thing, we recognize the many gaps in research in the data, in our local data, for example, regarding the burden of illness and equity issues, dami nating kulang, and therefore we would like to encourage our academic partners to look into this, mga burden of illness and equity issues regarding health technology. We also recognize that we should have a better coordinative system uh, with PhilHealth and with DOH. Kasi sila rin nag-a-appeal. <laughs> May mga appeal din sila sa aming ginawang prioritization. That could have been better addressed early if we really had a closer coordination uh, with them. No? But most of all, you know what, what we learn? We recognize our own humanity as members of HTAC and HTAC. We saw our weaknesses and our strengths 
uh, we saw but and especially our strengths regarding especially for age stud yung kanilang persistence yung kanilang dedication and commitment walang hindi hindi bumibitiw sa kanilang mga trabaho and so we hope that you appreciated that in this presentation so thank you very much and we'll see each other again okay thank you po dr marita with that, uh, we kindly call to, uh, to a close our first ever virtual public consultation. Thank you so much to our at to our attendees. And should you have any more questions or concerns or requests, kindly direct your questions to our email at hta at doh.gov.ph so may, we may address them directly. Thank you so much for... Uh, Bye-bye. Wala bang picture taking? Yeah, let's take a picture po. Uh, to our attendees who would like to turn on their cam. Hello. So, uh, we will be allowing our attendees to turn on their cam should they want to uh, be part of our picture taking. Uh, so, I'm acting at the end <laughs> oh, uh, ready? Uh, one, two, three, first panel smile. Yeah. Okay, po, second panel. One, two, three. Ay, ah, pasensya na po, hindi pa po nag-load yung second panel ko. Uh, Ayan, okay po. Uh, one, two, three, smile. Uh, okay na po to our attendees. Uh, you may leave uh, the Zoom room already. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, again, Bye -bye. should you have any more questions, kindly email it to us directly. Thank Bye -bye. you.